Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into an action thriller movie titled Takers. Enjoy the recap. At the beginning of the film, two detectives in a car are directed to a drug deal that is about to take place. Simultaneously, we are introduced to a crew of robbers disguised as employees. We meet Gordon, our mastermind, and John. They make their way upstairs and meet up with Jake and Jesse. At that moment, the two detectives arrive at the reported apartment and go inside. The detectives split up to arrest the criminals, but unfortunately, one of them manages to escape. The robbers are already preparing for the robbery, arming themselves to the teeth and donning their equipment. After exiting the elevator, they detonate a bomb inside it to distract the attention of the surveillance office. Next, while one part of the group keeps an eye on the hostages, the other part fills bags with money from the vault. Suddenly, a woman crushes the security alarm that informs all authorities of the robbery. Then, a member forces the woman to personally call the police. Thanks to this, reporters in a helicopter intercept the call and are the first to know about the news, so they decide to rush to the top of the bank building. In the process, a member named AJ, dressed as a security guard, waits on the top of the building and greets the reporters with a gun. As the police surround the building, the robbers steal the helicopter and escape with the loot alive. Later, they land and blow up the helicopter. Then they each get into a different car and drive away. This was the perfect robbery. No hostages or agents were injured, and the robbers left no clues behind. The scene then shifts to a prison, where a prisoner named Ghost is released from his cell. Back at the crime scene, we see that Detective Jack Wells has arrived at the scene and is determined to find out who the robbers are. Ghost is released from prison, and we see how he obtains a gun and cash from a hiding place. He then visits a criminal by the name of Sergei and tells him that he has a message from a mob boss in prison. Sergei lets him in, but another man surprises Ghost from behind, though he is easily disarmed, and Ghost points a gun at Sergei, who offers to talk instead. Meanwhile, the bank robbers celebrate their success. Jake tells his brother Jesse that they should visit his father in prison, but the latter wants no part of it. Soon after, while AJ is playing the piano, Jake approaches his soon-to-be wife Lily and asks her to marry him. At that moment, Gordon walks to the roof and shoots at the sky. The detectives continue to search the surveillance cameras for clues, but come empty-handed as over 10,000 people went through the elevators that day. The crew then makes their way to the cleanup man who launders their money and sorts out some private flights for them. A few days later, when John returns home, he finds Ghost inside and is surprised. It turns out that Ghost was the original organizer of the robberies, but a mistake made many years earlier had gotten him caught. After going to prison, Ghost has maintained secrecy and did not reveal any news about the other members. Now he wants to discuss a big score with the other men, and John promises him that he will notify the others. Gordon, the current leader of the crew, visits his sister Naomi, who is currently undergoing rehab at an institution. In the evening, Gordon throws a party and invites his crew to speak about Ghost. Everything was going smoothly, until Ghost arrived uninvited. He tells them they need to speak in private, and so they move upstairs. They discuss a new job that he has ready for them. The objective is to rob a cash transport truck in five days from tonight. He provides the exact route of the truck's transport and reveals that the loot is upwards of $25 million. Ghost reveals that he saved a Russian gangster in prison, and to repay Ghost, the Russian gangster asked his men to get the truck's route from the bank dispatcher. Ghost states that he will pay his own share to the Russians, so they only have to worry about preparing for the mission. After he leaves, Jack convinces everyone that their style was to act once a year, and that this time it was only five days of preparation. However, Gordon states that the greater the risk, the greater the reward, so they should not let such an opportunity pass them by. AJ carefully studies the truck's route and finds the best location for the robbery. Based on the scope of the explosion and the thickness of the road, Jake calculates the number of explosives needed. The others must come up with a plan to escape with the money. After planning, the members watch the armed guards and the way they process the transactions. They soon enter the sewer construction at night and map out where to place the detonators to cave the armored truck underground. Meanwhile, the detectives try to find out how the robbers got hold of the C4 explosives. While driving, they spot a known arms and explosives dealer. The detectives harass him and subtly threaten to have him arrested. So the arms dealer says something about a customer who bought a large amount of C4. That night, AJ goes to gangsters to buy the C4s, but the other party start messing around and don't intend on giving it easily. The gangsters take AJ's money and try to throw him out. Here a fight breaks out, and AJ violently takes down and beats all three gangsters. 
John and Ghost soon arrive to help him and discover that the C4 is hidden in a shed outside. In the process, the detectives receive information from an informant, but Jack is approached by Internal Affairs, who he brushes off, and heads out to the hideout where the explosives are made. The detectives break inside an abandoned building and a shootout takes place. Two Russian criminals then race for their lives to escape. Jack follows them and shoots one in the back, but he is fired at by the other Russian and once the bullets stop, Jack runs through a car park and injures his attacker. His partner also catches up and helps him put the criminal down. The police find a large amount of C4 and other weapons, from which they deduce that the criminals were preparing for a big mission. Jack also finds engineering drawings on the wall, but he doesn't quite figure out what the criminals are planning to do yet. Meanwhile the robbers are finishing preparations for the mission. AJ manages to hack the traffic light system so they can control the flow of traffic. Later that evening, Gordon and AJ discuss the plan and realize that they are cornered. Shortly thereafter, Gordon's sister, who has left the institution where she was committed earlier than expected, enters the house. Gordon worries about her, but she promises him that she is much better. The next day, Jack analyzes clues found in the criminal hideout discovered a day ago. Analyzing photos, Jack finds a strange connection between Ghost and Russian Mafia criminals. After discovering that Ghost was released just as a Russian criminal group was preparing for a big mission, Jack realizes that this is no coincidence. As it is Sunday, he decides to take his daughter out. Though off-duty, he goes down to the police station where Ghost is checking in on his parole. He decides to sack protocol and tails Ghost in his car. A little later, the detective hides in his car and discovers Ghost having a meeting with Gordon. He also spots Jesse, who makes the same hand salute that a robber made during the bank robbery. This ignites him to follow Gordon's car, in which John is driving. During the undercover pursuit he goes through his car to look for a pen, but John spots him. He and Gordon pull over and get their guns out, but the detective just drives past. After spotting the license plate, the detective returns to the police station and does a search on Gordon. He is met with nothing but a spot clean sheet. His partner then tells him that he is seeing things and needs to take a break and worry about the real things that matter. At that moment, Gordon's sister as it turns out stole money from his apartment and then sneaked out. He goes on a manhunt looking for her but to no avail. The next day, the robbers continue their work and install explosives at the exact location where the armored vans will stop on the street. At Gordon's house, John tells him that the insurance is ready. Ghost then walks in and tells the two that it feels good to be back in business together. Later that night, Gordon's sister calls him to tell him that she is at the police station. Gordon goes there to get her out, and in the process, Jack and his partner go inside the station. As the detective interrogates the man who was arrested with Gordon's sister from having flagged marked bills from the robbery, Gordon quickly grabs Naomi and drives off. In the car, the two have a bad argument, so she decides to escape from the car and runs off. The following day marks the planned robbery, and the team gets into action. While reviewing the elevator footage in search of Gordon, Jack is abruptly called away by his superiors. It's revealed that Eddie, Jack's partner, had earlier allowed a dealer to escape, taking money from the crime scene for himself. When Jack confronts Eddie, Eddie identifies Gordon in the elevator footage, tying him to the crime. At that moment, the robbers turn off the traffic lights at the intersection and Ghost acts as a traffic policeman. Back at the station, Jack tells Eddie that he was busted with the cash, but Jack says he'll do everything in his power to help him out of this mess. On the street, the arrival of the money truck is delayed. John positions himself as a sniper, ready to take out Ghost if he shows any sign of betrayal. The tension rises among the crew, and just as John is on the brink of pulling the trigger, the truck makes its appearance. Ghost points them towards the road hiding the explosives beneath. But as the detonation countdown reaches its final moments, a cyclist unexpectedly crosses the road in front of the van. The sudden braking causes the C4 explosives to detonate prematurely, as the plan was for the van to plummet into the created hole. Now, they're scrambling for a solution. A massive gunfight takes place between the robbers and the armored guards. John emerges from his hiding spot, smacks a security guard, and jumps into a van. He pushes the one in front of it into the gaping hole. The rest of the men provide cover fire as they tear up the door with the money. John is in a tight spot though, and crashes the truck in the hole as the money is presented before us. Meanwhile, as Jack drives Eddie home, they learn of the robbery. As they make their way, the robbers run off in the sewer tunnels. However, on the scene Jack remembers the subway routes found in the Russian criminal's hideout, and speculates that the nearby subway entrance is their escape route. Indeed, once there, the detectives spot Jesse in the crowd and begin to chase him. 
After a long chase, Jesse takes them through oncoming cars and shows off some of his parkour tricks, but once he is cornered, he runs into a hotel. He climbs levels and runs through people until he is eventually forced into the back of the hotel kitchen. The detectives split up, and when Jesse is confronted by Eddie, he shoots him first and takes off. Soon after, Jack finds his partner seriously wounded on the ground. In the process, Jesse continues to run away from the other police officers who try to stop him. But he proves too evasive and really shows his talent at running away. Unfortunately, Eddie is badly injured and tells Jack to take care of his family as he succumbs to his wounds. At that moment, Sergei confronts Ghost over the phone, angered that he conducted the robbery with a different team. Ghost then tells them to meet up with him at a hotel. At the hospital, Eddie is officially claimed dead in the line of duty, and Internal Affairs tells Jack the tape does not exist, so that his family may get some money. Meanwhile Gordon's team find themselves in a hotel room, dividing the loot. They hear a bang on the door and Jesse arrives, all agitated, and reveals that he has killed a cop. Gordon loses it at him, cause now it's a death sentence. Later Scott, the guy who launders the money for them, arrives to pick up the cash. Ghost sees the Russians arriving from the window and enters the bathroom to inform Sergei of their whereabouts. As Gordon tells everyone the plans, they check the bathroom and see Ghost not there. Immediately a bullet goes through the door and hits AJ. Turns out Ghost had intended to use Sergei's anger to kill Gordon and the others. A heavy gunfight breaks out with weapons such as pistols, shotties, and automatics being fired at will. Several Russians are killed but in the process, AJ sacrifices himself to give the others a chance to defend themselves. And that's exactly what they do. After forcing the Russians to split up, Jake goes from the back and kills all the Russians, including Sergei. Fortunately, the rest of the team are alive, and decide to split up knowing that the fierce confrontation has attracted the police. The two brothers return to the mansion to get Jack's wife and some money. However, he instead discovers that Ghost has taken the money and killed his wife. To make it worse, they are simultaneously surrounded by the police. Meanwhile, Jack finds Gordon's apartment and sneaks inside to investigate. With the police completely surrounding the robber's mansion and with no way out, Jesse and Jack decide it is better to fight than to be imprisoned. And so, they walk out guns blazing, but are met with equal force as they drop to the ground. Meanwhile, Gordon is on his way home, but when he is about to open the door he realizes that someone has ruined the lock. He flees to the parking lot where he finds his sister. They get into the car and make their way to the airport. The detective spots him driving away and immediately begins to chase him. En route, Jean calls Gordon and tells him that something's up. They correctly deduce that Ghost will kill Scott and steal the rest of the money. In fact, Scott gets on the private jet, but Ghost arrives, kills him, and steals the money. However, when he gets off the jet, he runs into Gordon who is pissed off. Out of nowhere, Jack also appears, and the three of them point their guns at each other. Then gunshots ring out with Ghost the only one left standing. The other two are wounded on the ground, and Ghost approaches Gordon to finally kill him and end it, but suddenly he is instead shot. Jean shows his face and the indestructible duo then disarm the detective, grab the money and take off. With Naomi in the back seat, the three of them drive to their new money field life that awaits. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.